So I've started yet another project. I've set out to design and build a 3D printable Wehrmacht Enigma machine. Uh, this is the naval version of the encryption machine that the German military forces used during World War II. Um, it was regarded at the time by Germany and her allies to be uh, unbreakable. Um, they were so confident in this encryption that they, um, they sold Enigmas to other countries uh, for use in their confidential communications. Um, unfortunately for the Germans, the encryption was broken pretty early on in the war by this bloke, uh, Alan Turing and his team at Bletchley Park. Um, and this provided the Allies with a huge advantage because they knew everything the Germans were telling their forces in the field. Um, you know, troop movements, where ships are going to be, um, where U-boats are patrolling. Um, the Allies managed to keep this fact a secret until well after the war was over. Um, if you're interested, um, here is a link explaining the weaknesses in the encryption and how those weaknesses were exploited. Um, if you're interested in how the Allies managed to keep such an incredible secret, um, just Google codename Ultra. Um, it's pretty fascinating. Uh, mechanically and electrically, the Enigma is not too complex. Um, there's the buttons, uh, the plug board, the rotors, and the lamps. Um, the buttons are where you punch in the message you want to encode or decode. Uh, it's not quite QWERTY, it's a QWERTZ. And that's just a German thing. Um, the plug board just swaps around um, letters. So if you press a B and you've got a plug that goes from B to S, then it comes through as an S. Um, and that that signal is then passed up to the rotors, to the right-hand side, and then uh, there's three or four rotors. That's what they look like. They've got pins on the right-hand side and just flat contacts on the left. Um, so the signal comes in from the right-hand side and gets transposed across to the contacts on the left-hand side, and there's some wiring in the middle that scrambles them. So if it comes in on this pin, it goes into the wiring and then comes out on that contact, and then comes into the next rotor and then gets scrambled again. Um, it gets scrambled by... That, that's the context where the, the signal comes in. Uh, so it goes through three or four rotors, uh, hits the left-hand side, and all this does is um, reflects the signal and sends it back through the rotors a second time. Goes back through all the scrambling in the reverse direction, hits this side, and then goes through to the lamps. And so you press a button, get swapped around a bit, goes through the rotors that way, gets reflected through the rotors that way, then goes to the lamp. Um, the rightmost rotor um, turns with this ratchet once every key press, and on the, on the Wehrmacht Enigma, this one rotates uh, once for every half revolution of this one, and then the one to the left of that rotates once for every or one click for every half revolution of the one to the right of it. Uh, on the regular Enigma, um, they rotate, or the ones to the left rotate, once, one click for every full revolution of the one to the right. Um, the, the Wehrmacht Enigma, Wehrmacht, I don't speak German, you can tell, uh, differs from the, the regular Enigma in that it can have four rotors, whereas the original only has three, and the original, of the, the default ground forces one, not the naval one, doesn't have the plug board, so it's a bit less encrypty. Um, so when you receive a message, you will look up the um, encryption key in your code book, and you'll set the starting position on each of these rotors, and you'll set the plug board settings, and then you'll start punching in your ciphertext, and another guy will be reading off what lights up over here. Um, some other pictures here. That's what it looks like without the box. So the close-up at the front, and this is awesome document that details how all the internal wiring stuff works. Um, so far, I've modelled one of the rotors. Um, so you can see. This is the side, uh, this is the right hand side where the pins are. Uh, this is where the, the finger knurling is, so you can advance it when you need to set the code. 
and this is the left hand side so you can see this is the the Vermark version because it's got two notches that makes it rotate twice or make it click round twice for every full revolution of the one to the right so here's my first prototype print um, this is just of a, a rotor um, you can see on this side these screws are slightly recessed on this side the screws protrude slightly um, so that's the stand-in for the, the pin and pad arrangement um, these are just mild steel screws um, the size of the rotors is largely driven by the diameter of the, um, the screws and the uh, insulation distance I have between them. I don't really want to decrease that, it's only one mil at present. But if I were to use smaller screws, I could just plug in a smaller screw radius and that, that diameter there would become smaller and then the whole thing could shrink along with it. Um, but for now, the big chunky screws are good enough, they're just the ones I had available at Bunnings. Um, Bunnings being the local hardware retailer just down the road. <clears throat> um, I printed out one side, I, the eagle eyed of you may notice that the ratchet direction is incorrect. I fixed that on this one I printed out. I printed this one just to test the electrical connection between the, um, the two. And um, it's good enough to transmit enough current to drive a little lamp or LED. So they, they, they click around, click, 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 as they rotate. Got a stainless steel shaft here. So um, as they advance, yeah, nice satisfying click. Uh, I'm going to have some springs that force the whole rotor assembly together to ensure good conduction. But uh, I'll have to tune the strength of those springs such that uh, when this one tries to advance, it doesn't just force the next one along by friction. Um, I bet that was loud. I'll pop this open. So here's the internals. There's enough space in there for all the, um, the crossover wiring and then you know, the mounting holes for where these mounting screws go in a little bushing in the middle um, so there are four or five different types of rotors um, each has unique internal wiring so when I put the internal wiring in um, this will just become a type 1 or a type 2 or whatever rotor and then that will be marked on the outside for the final version I'm going to print it in black at high quality settings this one doesn't look great because I just uh, cranked it out quickly as I wanted results. Um, but yeah, the final one will be all black and then the, the numbering. I haven't quite decided on how I'm going to do the numbering. Oh, sorry, the lettering around here. Um, but I'll, I'll work that out when I come to it. So this is, this is one of uh, four rotors that will be going along the shaft and uh, the signal will come in on that side get swapped through the wiring, come out on that side, and then go into the next rotor along, etc, etc. Cool beans. Bye bye. Hey, uh, I just wanted to make a quick note as to why I'm doing this. Um, it's because I'm an engineer and um, I find that the, the combination of clockwork and circuitry and the Enigma machine is really, really awesome. Um, and that it accomplishes something pretty remarkable for the point in time that it came from. Um, many awful things came out of that part of human history, um, but I think that it's still a good idea to celebrate the good stuff regardless. Bye.